What's up everybody? We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to be reacting to this Terrence McKenna video, A Message to Artists. So I'll play a little bit of it and then give you my thoughts. Let's do it. Culture, and this is my message to artists and to anybody else who cares to notice, culture is a plot against the expansion of consciousness. And this plot prosecutes its, uh, its goals through a uh, limiting of language. Language is the battleground over which the, the fight will take place. Because what we cannot, what we cannot say we cannot communicate, and by say, I mean dance, paint, sing, meme. What we cannot say, we cannot communicate. We can conceive of things that we cannot communicate. But, and I think every one of us here has done that, and that's a thrilling thing. That is uh, the deep homework. The, the psychedelic inner astronaut sees things which no human being has ever seen before and no human being will ever see again. But in fact, this has no meaning unless it is possible to carry it back into the collectivity. So I think about this whenever I have big psychedelic experiences and those feelings that you have when you're tripping and you have that euphoria and you feel like you have figured something out, there's just this giant epiphany. And then there's also these moments of wholeness and understanding and this feeling that I can really only describe as wholeness, you know, with a sense of peace accompanied by it and I think about how I can bring that back as a musician because visionary artists are some of the most amazing artists out there and I think what they're doing is also what Terrence McKenna is talking about here like people who have visions like Alex Gray and Mars One people like that they have these visions and then they bring them back into the collectivity like Terrence is saying so I feel like visionary artists do that but like what do musicians do? Because this is a question I'm asking myself as a musician and someone who is considers himself a psychedelic inner astronaut. So I think like since there's nothing for me visually to bring back, what can I bring back as a musician? And I think one of those things is wholeness, this feeling that you get from the psychedelics. I feel like you can infuse that feeling of like, wholeness and even wonder like even some of the other emotions that you feel on psychedelics but there's a layer even deeper to that that has been like kind of this mystery it's been central to my life and my creative world and that is that when i'm jamming and let's say that i've had a bit to smoke or i'm even tripping a little bit or a lot and when i'm jamming with my band doing like improvised jamming I close my eyes and I experience synesthesia and it's this incredibly geometric and dancing synesthesia but it always appears to be like the representation of the music it's like so connected in a way that like if I just hit a different note it would be a different shape and a different color and this geometry is going in my head so not only am I like receiving this geometry and these visuals in my head but it's inspiring even more you know it's like once i start getting them it's like that's fueling it and then i'm like responding to that musically so i've always felt like this is some kind of big mystery and like and if i can get that feeling out of this like hyperspace zone if i can get that feeling into this world through my music then i will have accomplish this goal that Terrence McKenna is talking about. Also, sometimes I just hear music in my head that seems to be kind of coming from this 
idealistic, like, it just seems to be coming from this ethereal space that's like outside of me and then I'm just like the interpreter. And I feel like there are perfect versions of songs that just come to me fully formed in my head. And this really gets highlighted with cannabis and psychedelics. And I, if I could just barely tap the source of what I'm hearing in my head, then I could really bring something back from the other side. It's just really, really hard to do. Uh, yeah, let's keep going. And what motivates me to talk to groups like this is the belief that we do not have centuries of gently unfolding time ahead of us in which to uh, uh, you know, gently tease apart the threads of the human endeavor and create a bright new world. Uh, that's not our circumstance. Uh, this is a fire in a madhouse. And uh, to get a hold on the situation, I think we are going to have to force the issue. Well, uh, one, one way of forcing the issue, or a, a chemical definition of forcing the issue when you're talking about a chemical reaction, is catalysis. We want to catalyze consciousness. We want to move it faster toward its goals, whatever those goals are. Well, I believe that to the present moment, language, again in the broadest sense, speech, dance, musical composition, language has just been allowed to grow like topsy. It's uh, been a kind of uh, every man for himself situation. Now, what we really need as we see ourselves moving from one species among tens of thousands of species on this planet, over the past 10,000 years, we have redefined ourselves. And now, like it or not, we are the custodians of the destiny of this planet. Our decisions affect every life form on the planet. And yet, we are still communicating with each other with the extremely precise medium of small mouth noises mediated by ignorance and hate. <laughs> yeah, so this is a good example of Terence being ahead of his time and speaking about our impact on the planet and climate change with a sense of urgency. I think, yeah, this video is from 1990, so I remember just 10 years ago feeling like the majority of people still felt denial about the urgency of our situation and like he also points out how it was like an every man for himself so it's like all these companies that are polluting all these you know refineries and all of them are just acting out of self-interest and the thing is that that has piled up exponentially so that now we're pumping millions of tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. And I don't know about everyone else, but in third grade, they taught us CO2 is a greenhouse gas, AKA it warms up whatever is in there. So the analogy fire in a madhouse could not be more literal considering that fires are also a huge problem now. So it's been every man for himself up until this point, but as he correctly points out, we have to recognize our role on this planet as the caretakers of the earth, because for one, we have the opposable thumbs to do that, and two, we have the intelligence to do that. So it seems like a pretty good idea for, you know, evolutionary reasons that when intelligence evolves on the earth that the intelligence is used to further take care of the earth like imagine if we could positively impact the climate and the environment as much as we negatively impact it right now we could do a lot of good in the world and you know obviously there's still going to be natural cycles but still we can do a lot better and 
I think that for me also psychedelics have kind of catalyzed this idea. I was always kind of pro-environment. I wasn't necessarily against it. Like I just was ambivalent towards it, right? But then once I started to see myself as a connection to nature, that really catalyzed my sense of self I needed to grow into to be able to see that when you hurt the planet, you're hurting yourself. It's outside of this skin bag, but it is, we are not just an organism, an atomic unit, we are an organism in an environment. The two are inseparable. Although there might be a arbitrary border between me and my environment, in the grand scheme of things, it's just continuous. So we really need to see that. And I think that is a solid way that psychedelics can catalyze consciousness in the way that Terence is talking about. So let's keep going. <clears throat> this doesn't seem like the way to do business <laughs> as we approach the third millennium. So it, it, what, I, uh, what I'm hopeful for and what I actually see happening, I mean, I think that we're on the right track the birth of a new kind of humanity is going to take place, but there are still a lot of decisions to be made. How violent shall this birth be? What toll shall it take upon our mother, the earth? What shape shall the baby be in when it finally is delivered? These are the decisions that artists can mediate and control. Most people are afraid of the unconscious. This is why uh, you, know, you can have a, a psychedelic compound like DMT, which is very much like ordinary brain chemistry, uh, appears completely physiologically harmless, uh, only lasts 10 minutes, extremely powerful, and generally in this society you have no takers. This is because there has been a failure of moral courage. And the failure of moral courage is uh, perhaps most evident in our own community, the community of, uh, of the artists. In a way, uh, it's the poets that have failed us because they have not uh, provided a song or sung a vision that we could all move in concert to. Oh, yeah. Terrence is such a legend, man. So here he talks about a birth of a new humanity and how we have the choice to mediate as artists. We have a huge role in mediating what that birth of the new humanity looks like. And when he's talking about we can decide, you know, how it's gonna impact the planet, we can decide how the baby's gonna look. There are a bunch of different ways you can interpret that, but one of them, I think it's almost like a political uh, ramification that like, like let's say bringing about this new change could be a bloody scenario where, you know, it takes a revolution and violence to finally like get the people out of power. Um, I'm not advocating that, I'm just saying like hypothetically but it could also be through peaceful and democratic means and so like this can be decided by the kind of like moral vision that artists paint so you could even put it in your art like it makes me think of artists like the solar punk genre or like the new age art from the 80s where it showed this like utopian kind of idealistic idyllic futuristic place where humanity would flourish in the future so it is up to the artist to kind of paint the way forward and if you look at it we're living that reality where a lot of ideas from sci-fi actually became reality eventually because the sci-fi thought of it first so that's another example if you think of those writers as or those authors of sci-fi as artists so there's that and then he even talks about poets literally not having the right words and singing the right songs. So that includes musicians too. 
that we could all move in concert to. So it's like, yeah, that's a really hard thing to do because think about how divided everybody is right now. And like, how could you find a like concept or a song or lyrics that mean something to everybody? I feel like it's just impossible to kind of bring together so many disparate views, especially if you're talking about everybody. Yeah, I don't know, it's still a mystery. I mean, I guess protest songs are pretty good, but like it's still only just a group, like a small fraction of people who resonate with that. I think that if you consider the stuff we were talking about earlier, like bringing these psychedelic states of mind of wholeness and peace, like from that realm and bringing it into this realm, I feel like if we can make like the perfect song that somehow incorporates that and it's just somehow automatically digestible and like resonates with everybody that would be a miracle but it's the reason that the poets have failed us is because that's a pretty dang tall order so let's continue so now we are in the absurd position of being able to do anything and what we are doing is fouling our own nest and pushing ourselves toward planetary toxification and extinction. This is because the poets, the artists, have not articulated an, a, um, a moral vision. The moral vision must come from the unconscious. It doesn't have to do, I believe, with uh, you know, these um, post-meaning movements in art, deconstructionism, and this sort of thing. I mean, I'm basically putting out a very conservative, but I think um, exciting program for art, that art's task is to save the soul of mankind, and that anything less is a dithering while Rome burns. Because if the artists who are self-selected for uh, being able to journey into the other, if the artists cannot find the way, then the way cannot be found. Ideology is extremely alien to art. Political ideology, I mean. And if you will but notice, it is political ideology that has been calling the shots for the last seven or eight hundred years. We can transcend politics if we can put some other program in place. You cannot transcend politics into a void. And I believe that a world without ideology could be created if what were put in place of ideology were the notion of the realization of the good, the true, and the beautiful. You know, the three-tiered canon of the Platonic aesthetic. The reconnect the notion of the good, the true, and the beautiful. Then use psychedelics to empower the artist to go into this vast dimension that surrounds human history on all sides to an infinite depth and return from that world with the transcendental images that can lift us to a new cultural level. The muse is there. The, the dull maps that rationalism has given us are nothing more than whistling past the graveyard by the bad little boys of science. <laughs> yeah, so he's still talking about this idea of the artist bringing something back to save humanity. And he posits, because, you know, like I was saying, it's a really hard thing to do. So, like, how do you do that as an artist? And he brings up the idea from Plato of the good, the true, and the beautiful. And he said in one of his other talks, when he mentioned this before, 
how it's really hard to know the good and then even harder to know the true, um, but the beautiful is instantly recognizable. So I think that you can use psychedelics to journey into this other, like as he says, and when you see something that is so beautiful or you feel something that's so beautiful that that is good and true. Well, we can't be totally sure if it's good and true, but it's the closest thing we can feel sure about because of the instant beauty that we recognize. So if visionary artists can bring some of that back, which I think a lot of them do very well, and if musicians can bring back this kind of four-dimensional hyperspace infused sound, which that is what it is to me, like, it's like if I could bring down this thing from this higher dimension and the little slices to this world, then I will have accomplished my mission. I'm still working on that one. You only have to avail yourselves of these shamanic tools to rediscover a nature which is not mute, as Sartre said in a kind of culmination of the modern viewpoint. Nature is not mute. It is man who is deaf, and the way to open our ears, open our eyes, and reconnect with the intent of a living world is through the psychedelics. Now, as you know, biology runs on genes, and genes are the units of meaning of heredity. But we could make a model of the informational environment that is represented by culture. And in fact, this is done. A word has been invented, meme, M-E-M-E, -E, meme. A meme is not the smallest unit of heredity. A meme is the smallest unit of meaning of an idea. Ideas are made of memes. And I think the art community might uh, function with more efficiency in the production of visionary aesthetic breakthroughs if we would think of ourselves as an environment modeled after the natural environment where we as artists are attempting to create means which enter an environment of other memes that are in competition with each other, and out of this competition of memes, ever more appropriate, adapted, and uh, suitable ideas can gather and uh, link themselves together into higher and higher organisms. Now, in order for this to happen, there is an obligation upon each one of us to carry our ideas clearly, because in the same way that a gene must be copied correctly to be replicated, or it will cause some pathological mutation, a meme must be correctly replicated, or it will cause a pathological mutation. Y'all like those old school memes? So this is another example of Terence McKenna being ahead of his time. Here he is in 1990 talking about the importance of memes. So I think that if Terence McKenna were still alive and here with us today, I think that that would be the biggest thing that he would probably be focused on is this idea of memes because it really is a powerful tool. If you think about the viral capability he was just talking about meme replication and all of this stuff and these transcendental ideas as memes and art as memes and the ideas that are contained in the art as memes and I don't think he would have even predicted the like viral capability of memes in the future so I feel like that would probably be one of the biggest things he would still be talking about if he were alive today. For instance I would say what the Nazis did to Friedrich Nietzsche's philosophy was a bad cop, a miscopied meme became a toxic mutation inside a culture. So uh, 
I would suggest to the people in this room tonight that you take a good look around at who's here. Artistic people, psychedelic people look pretty much like everybody else out in society. But we have come here tonight self-selected for our interest in the empowering capacity of psychedelic plants and the empowering capacity of art. So we represent an affinity group, a population with a potential for uh, uh, mutagenic impact on the ideological structures of the rest of society. So look around. Someone here has what you need. And if you can only figure out who it is, you can make a novel connection to move them into a new level of creativity. So I named my channel after Terence's quote, where he's quoting Tim Leary about finding the others. And I feel like in this last section of the clip, you can really feel his uh, dedication to that idea where he kind of encourages the crowd and tells them like you're in a group of unique individuals who are interested in this idea of psychedelics empowering you and empowering artists and he's basically he was trying to hook up the people that had psychedelics with the artists because the inspiration that that would create so I totally believe in the power that psychedelics have to catalyze creativity because I've witnessed it for myself and it's something that really does truly catalyze your creativity and kind of bring it to this next level. He also just does a good job of like making everybody feel like they're part of this kind of new tribe. They're trying to do something with the tools that they have which for us is psychedelics and art. And so if it's done right, I think we really can have a huge impact on creating this future that we dream of.